Hey ladies and gents, BQ here with the Impact Lounge. I want to recap just a couple things from the conference call, the teleconference today with Scott Moore and Don Callis. Um, I, I am uploading that to the channel. Many of you don't really necessarily want to sit through all that, but it was a good call. And uh, my personal thing with these teleconferences, and uh, I, I'm working on voicing this opinion. Uh, Adam is on a majority of the calls, but sometimes I'll hop on. Um, we're, we're working on voicing this in opinion. When we get a teleconference like this, peeling back the curtain a little bit, um, being able to ask questions that the fans want to know, that, you know, uh, squash rumors, negativity, we learn a lot and it's really good for the company. But sometimes we get these teleconferences where the wrestlers come on in character and it's more of an interview. And that's difficult for us as like the wrestling media side because we don't know how to approach each teleconference. You know, the uh, Sammy Callahan, I hopped on that one a couple weeks ago. Frankly, it was kind of a waste of my time because um, he was he answered every question and cutting a promo and Ohio versus everything. And this, you know, it was kind of a waste of my lunch break, if I'm being totally honest with you. And I'm a Sammy Callahan fan, but, you know, what did we learn from that? Um, other examples were, you know, the... Eli Drake and uh, Johnny Impact won. Uh, the, the Cult of Lee won. I was on that one as well. Uh, we, we left learning nothing. So this one was really good to listen to. And it is on the channel. Uh, so definitely check it out. Um, I'll even post the link here in the comments. So you guys can check it out if you want to. But I wanted to talk about a couple things uh, that came up. That I think are important. I, I do encourage you to listen to it. The whole thing. But... Just to touch on a couple things. Number one, the Austin Aries situation. Um, why was this spoiled? A lot of people want to know. Um, and if the, I'm sorry, if you're just hearing that for the first time, I apologize. I usually do not speak on, on things like that. But um, the reason they're putting spoilers out on social media is because they're trying something new. And the point that they made was everybody seems to break their news, but them. And, and that's true. You know, uh, we all know that the certain spoilers are going to get out no matter what. And usually the world title change, a global title changes. Those are the ones that really get out. You know, usually the tag titles, uh, even the knockout to an extent. Um, and yeah, the grand champion, whatever, those don't really get out. But the, but the, the big belt. Th that always gets out. Those spo those spoilers get out. Debuts, returns, that always get out. So Impact is taking the approach of, you know, getting involved in the social media chatter. Because obviously, you know, this was the most people have been talking about Impact on Twitter last night uh, when when the, you know, return happened in a very long time. And that's a real positive. That's, that's generating interest and buzz. As opposed to it happening... And then the Impact Twitter playing dumb. You know what I mean? When they're just like, well, well uh, this and this happened. You, you know, and it, it's wrestling. We're supposed to get lost in the moment. But they understand that it makes them look kind of dumb or whatever. You know, so that is something new. They're trying to get involved with the uh, social media chatter. We'll see what happens. I think I think it's actually a good thing. I hate having things spoiled. Trust me. But I I get where they're going with it. Impact Wrestling video game, they uh, they will be looking at that happening about about at, the, at making that happening in 2018. I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words a little bit. Making that happen in 2018 doesn't mean it's going to necessarily, but they are going to explore the possibilities of making that a reality. And Scott said they would be dumb to not want to get involved in the gamer world because the gamer world is more popular now than it's ever been. You know, so really good thing there. Regarding the titles, we will see new championship belts in April at the pay-per-view. They would not confirm that it was locked down. They would not say, they said, we will, we will announce things as it happens. Uh, so they wouldn't make that confirmation. But at that pay-per-view is when we're going to see the new title belts. I don't know how many they're going to be. I personally think the knockouts and the tag team and X division look fine. It's a global championship that looks really awkward. I like the GFW title. I always thought it was a sharp title, but with the plate over it, it looks dumb. And I think everybody agrees with that. Um, Grand Championship, I would imagine, very possibly will change as well. 
Um, what else, what else we talk about on this call? The Twitch partnership. So this is what's going to happen with Twitch. They're obviously are going to stream impact wrestling content, you know, much like Pluto TV and everything. Um, and I don't know how strong that Pluto TV partnership is. I mean, cause it's so similar. The impact channel is so similar to the GWN. I do have one friend who watches it. Um, so, so I don't really know how strong of a partnership that is, but basically with Twitch, it's going to be, it's going to be similar, you know, to like Pluto TV, the GWN where it's, um, you know, streaming, uh, co- content from the library, but there's also going to be exclusive content to Twitch. That's not going to be wrestling related. It's going to be more, you know, backstage stuff, peeling back the curtain a little bit. And, uh, you know, I personally think a lot of that original content should go on the GWN, but they see an opportunity with uh, Twitch, so they want to do some exclusive content for that as well. So that's basically what's happening with that, and um, they are going to make some changes to how things look. So obviously right now we see the four-sided ring, the blue ropes. They're going to be um, looking at some ways to change up how the impact zone looks. You know, obviously there's a certain way that regardless of where they do it, the impact zone always looks the same, right? So they're going to look at some other options. I personally think they should do something similar to Ring of Honor. You know, you can still put a majority of the crowd on the camera side or whatever. But I I think to to tighten the crowd up a little bit, um, you know, kind of go around the, you know, couple sides of the ring and everything. I think that'll help. It seems to work with Ring of Honor fairly well, so hopefully they do something like that. But they are going to look at some kind of changes as far as um, the presentation and everything. Knockouts, they're going to be scouting new knockouts out, um, going to you know indie shows and everything, and uh, and really trying to find the best women. He's you know Scott said he's he's passionate about the division. You know brought up uh, Dutch him him and Dutch Mantel how they used to book it. So it seems like they want to place that that importance on the division. I did ask about the tag team championships and he um, completely dodged it. And uh, they dodged a lot. I shouldn't say they dodged, but they danced a lot around a lot of questions, but good things were said there. There I asked about the promotion and marketing as well. You know, something we, we talk about a lot, you know, I said, you know, basically it's social media and that's kind of it. You know, the, the marketing leaves a lot of room to be desired and, um, Don Callis answered up. So I'm, you know, I'm a business major. I went to business school and everything. So speaking my language, I like that. And, um, he said the best, you know, promotion and marketing they could have right now is building buzz and free promotion is better than paid promotion in, in a lot of cases, you know, just cause you're going to get commercial time and everything doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be super helpful. But if you can get, if you can build buzz, you can have, you know, certain people who come in or certain matches or whatever and get people talking. That's where they really think. Uh, and then, you know, have wrestlers leaving with positive things to say with the company. They really think that's the place to start and it's going to snowball. So, the, you know, the, the goal is to be in a completely different place by the end of 2018. And then, of course, at the end of 2019, to be in a completely different place as well. But they are you know, looking to grow in as many ways as possible, but they're going to do it in a very realistic manner. They're not going to, you know, throw money at platforms that, that don't, uh, that they get no return, return of interest on. So, uh, in the comments guys, I mean, uh, in the description, you can hit the, uh, down arrow. I'll have the link there. You guys can listen to the whole thing. Um, it's about an hour long. These conference calls are a little difficult to listen to. When we're when we're doing it on the phone, it sounds totally normal. But for some reason, the, the audio export is very funny. And I know it's very difficult to listen to at times. But this is a pretty pretty um, important call, in my opinion. Uh, lots of media outlets hopped on there. So um, any other questions, uh, you know, let me know. I try to touch on the things I thought were kind of the most important ones. Um, I think, I think someone, they, they, they are looking at the UK. I think someone might've asked about British boot camp. I was going to, but someone kind of beat me to it. And I, I think they are going to start revisiting some of that stuff again in the future. Last one, actually, uh, one I for, totally forgot about. They're going to be looking at the pay-per-view model. So 
I wanted to ask this question someone else kind of did regarding the one night onlys and everything. They're going to be looking at the pay per view model, um, or they're re- they're reviewing the pay per view pay per view model. Basically, is what they were saying, and um, you know they're obviously looking towards more live pay per views. Obviously, they're going to have the three this year. So I don't know if they're going to be looking on, you know, trying to do four possibly or or what. But they're definitely looking at the one night onlys and thinking, you know, what can we do to to improve those? So um, that's it, guys. Thanks for listening to me ramble. I hope that was uh, fairly helpful for you guys who don't want to sit through the entire call. But uh, I do encourage you to check it out anyway. Talk to you later. Peace.